In this lesson, we'll discuss the Accumulo data model. At the most basic level, Accumulo stores key value pairs. These key value pairs are grouped together into tables. Beyond simply storing them, Accumulo sorts key value pairs by the key. This allows the value associated with a particular key to be found very quickly by performing a binary search across the set of keys. Clients look up a value by specifying the key, and Accumulo returns the complete key value pair. Additionally, clients can request the set of key value pairs that are sorted directly following the key requested. Values in Accumulo consist of an array of bytes. Accumulo doesn't restrict the data in the values in any way. The application is responsible for interpreting the bytes of a value. You can store whatever you want in the value, but Accumulo assumes that it will be able to load several values into memory at once, and so there's a practical limit on the size of values based on the memory of your hardware. Keys in Accumulo consist of multiple components, and these components give application designers some control over how data is handled. We'll talk about the main components of the key first, and then go into more details about each component and how they might be used. Keys consist of three main components, a row ID, a column, and a timestamp. If you're used to working with spreadsheets or with tables in relational databases, the row and column concept will be familiar. A set of key value pairs that have the same row ID are considered to be in one logical row. Each row can have multiple values, each associated with a column. Row IDs and columns consist of byte arrays. Over time, we may choose to store new versions of a value associated with a particular row and column. The timestamp component allows us to store new versions of a value. We may choose to pay attention to only the newest value for a row and column, or we may choose to retrieve multiple versions if they exist. Timestamps are interpreted as Java long integers and are sorted in descending order. Accumulo sorts keys first by row ID, then by column, then by timestamp. The value is not a part of the key and so does not affect the sort order. Row IDs are first sorted in ascending lexicographical order, such as A to Z. Within one row, columns are sorted in ascending lexicographical order. Finally, within a row and column, multiple versions of values are sorted in descending numerical order. This way, the newest version of a row and column appears first when scanning down a table. Unlike a spreadsheet or many relational database tables, in which a row ID simply tells you that the row is the hundredth row, for example, the row ID in Accumulo can contain some useful information. For example, we might choose to identify rows by some unique identifier used in an application, such as an email address. Also unlike conventional relational database tables or a spreadsheet, rows in Accumulo do not need to have the same set of columns. Each row can have its own set of columns. If there is no value for a particular column in a row, rather than storing a null value under that column, the key value pair identifying that column simply doesn't exist. This may be the most significant feature of the Accumulo data model, since it allows data that does not conform to a fixed schema, or data whose schema is evolving over time, or data whose schema is sparse, to be stored without imposing processing overhead or a degradation in performance. For example, we may have some social media messages that we're storing in Accumulo. Some of these messages may include hashtags. We may choose to store these hashtags under their own column, with the original message in another column, both under a common row ID. In Accumulo, there's no need to store a null or blank value in rows that don't have a hashtag. There is simply no key value pair for that column. If we look a bit closer at the Accumulo data model, we find that the column component itself is split into three components. In the original Bigtable paper by Google, the column consisted of two components, the column family and the column qualifier. To those two components, the designers of Accumulo added a third, called the column visibility. The simplest way to begin modeling data in a table is to store column names in the column qualifier component and to leave the column family and column visibility components blank. Accumulo allows these components to be blank. But if we find that our application is frequently accessing some columns together and not others, we may choose to begin to group columns under a common family. Both the column family and column qualifier components consist of byte arrays. If the column family is present, key value pairs will first be sorted by column family and then by column qualifier. This allows columns in a particular family to be scanned together when reading down a table. If we assign our column families right, this may allow our application to avoid reading data it doesn't need by reading only one or a few column families within a row. Column families can be grouped into something called locality groups as well, which we'll discuss in a later lesson. The column visibility component, which was added to the original Bigtable model, can contain a security label expression that describes what authorization tokens are required in order to read this particular key value pair. 
If a user attempts to read a key value pair and that user does not present the required set of authorization tokens necessary to satisfy the expression stored in the column visibility, then Accumulo will simply not return this key value pair to the client. Now we have the complete Accumulo data model. Application designers have a lot of flexibility in terms of how they map application data to this model, and this will determine the order that application data is laid out on disk. We'll discuss considerations and options for mapping data to this model in coming lessons.